Hey, welcome back to New England Fire Cooking. I'm Aaron Higgins, and today in this video, what I'm gonna show you guys is how a beginner should go about cooking brisket. So you just got your first smoker, whether it's a big green egg, Weber kettle, an offset smoker, or a pellet grill. And you've done some chicken, you've done some ribs, maybe you've done a pork butt, but now you wanna go for that crown jewel of barbecue, which is a smoked beef brisket. And you wanna get this done before all your friends show up, obviously. You want it to taste good, you want the flavor to be on point, and you might even want to have some additional items there. You might want to do brisket, ribs, and chicken, but you only have one smoker. So how are you going to do that? Brisket takes hours and hours and hours. Well, in this video, what I'm going to show you how to do is how to go about prepping your brisket, seasoning your brisket, and exactly how you should cook it. And a couple hacks, a couple cheats that you can use to get you ahead of the game so that by the time your friends show up, all the food's ready to go, you had plenty of time to get everything done, and it wasn't a real big hectic hassle. So. Let's get into this. Okay, so here we are, early morning. Um, a lot of beginners don't realize that they need to trim their brisket. I'm about to put some photos up on the screen right now so you can see what this brisket looked like before I trimmed it. As you can see, uh, there used to be some discoloration. You know, this brisket was a little bit bigger. I rounded this out right here, okay. I took some fat out of here. And then on this side, this side in particular, um was full of fat okay this whole area was full of really hard fat and that's called the decal okay and that's not going to render that just will not render at all um it's just going to be a big glob of nasty goo that you don't want so anything that's brown anything that is discolored uh you want to trim that off you really do stuff like this where you have some marbling going through there and this isn't the best brisket i've bought you guys i gotta tell you this is a select i'm really not all that thrilled about it got this huge butcher's cut right here in the point instead of holding together like this someone slashed into it um, during processing so um once again it's a select um it's okay if you're gonna use this in the backyard um you just want to do the best you can to make it be good um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a really simple rub on this. Um, the other thing I'll bring up here is, as you can see here, I've got a pretty thick fat cap over here, but I don't really have much of anything on this side. Okay. Uh, very little. Um, you get a quarter inch, maybe around here, but as you get down into this flat, you don't really end up with much. And then we're missing some fat here and up front. And once again, butcher's cut on this side. So this is what you get with a select grade brisket. You want at least a choice. So what I'll tell you right off the bat is um, avoid the selects if you can. Um, if you can't, um, do the best you can with it. Um, it's not the end of the world. Um, it, this, once again, this is a backyard cook. This isn't like you have money riding on it or, you know, um, anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I just wanted to give you guys a little rundown of how to expose the meat on this brisket. Um, I could do a whole video on brisket trimming and, um, I'm going to have to do that soon. Um, just so you guys have some kind of reference point. So this big vein of fat that you see right here, guys, that's normal. You want to leave that. The point is, is you want to expose as much meat as you can so that your seasoning can get in there and give the meat some flavor. Also, on this flat, you're going to have little globs of fat just kind of thrown in periodically. You want to trim those off. Any silver skin, um, take as much of that off as you can because that's a barrier between your rub and your meat. But what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go really, really basic um, just because this is a beginner's thing. This is for someone who is brand new to this. I always cook brisket with the fat side down on the grill. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, considering that I cook it fat side down, is I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to get the fat side up. And then what I have right here is this fancy little glass of kosher salt and coarse ground black pepper. That's it, that's all this rub is. I'm, you know, if you look at any of my other brisket videos, you see that I use some fancy pants rubs, but I'm 
got to tell you, um, in Texas, this is all they use. So if this is all they use and they cook killer brisket, it's got to be good for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this on and I'm going to lay it on fairly thick, really. I'm not really going to hold back. Um, considering this is the only seasoning that we're going to put on this brisket, I'm, uh, I'm not really going to mess around here. I'm going to layer it right on. All right, because bark is key with brisket, it really is. And a huge cut of meat like this, a really big cut of meat. And this is a little brisket too, guys. This isn't all that big. This is um, it's about nine and a half pounds when I bought it. And by the time I was done trimming it, I would guess that it's probably right around, I would say maybe eight pounds or so, something like that. So layer your seasoning right on. Don't be shy. Do not be shy, especially with something this size. And if you go, if you're gonna go purist Texas style with uh, coarse ground black pepper and kosher salt, definitely don't hold back. Layer it right on because this is what's going to be your bark. Okay, very very important. Bark is absolutely paramount to brisket. Or any kind of beef, really. Even if, if you're doing beef ribs, if you're doing chuck roast, anything like that. Bark is bark is absolutely paramount. One thing I will say about this brisket, you guys. I'm about to flip this thing over after I give this seasoning a good pat right in. One thing I got to say is that it's very flexible. And I like that a lot. It's extremely flexible. And... I really, really look for that when I go and pick a brisket out, um, is the flexibility of it when it's cold. If it's, if it's got some flexibility, like you see here, that's a good thing, okay? You, if you get a brisket that is really stiff, chances are when you cook it, it's gonna be really stiff as well. So when you have good flex like this all the way through, it means that there's a good amount of wet age on it and that it's gonna be pretty tender. That's a telltale sign. So here we go again, meat side. Really lay it, layer it right on, don't be shy. Big cut of meat like this. You will be just fine with buku seasoning. Don't worry about the sides. We will certainly get them. There's plenty of leftover rub. That's what I do. I season the top and I season the bottom, or the fat side and the meat side, depending on what side you like to cook your brisket on, um, whatever you call top and bottom. I'll season one side, I'll season the other side, and then once I get each side seasoned, what I'll do is I'll roll the sides in the rub that's left over on the board or on the tray or whatever it is you have your brisket sitting on. Just roll the sides right in it and you'll pick up all that extra rub and you'll be in really good shape. So, just like this, go right around, dab your sides, your bottoms, your everything. Get a good coat of rub on the brisket. You could always come in afterwards and get it all patted right in. And that's your basic brisket rub. 50-50 kosher salt, ground black pepper coarse ground black pepper. Kosher salt, coarse ground black pepper is a win every time. It's good enough for Texas, it's good enough for me. So now we're gonna go get the smoker fired up. Okay, so we are looking at sunrise here in beautiful, beautiful New England. And I'm down here at the grill and we're gonna be using my offset today because if you're brand new at this and this is something that you're gonna get into, I mean, yeah, you could go with, you know, pellet grill that I have covered up over there or even the Weber kettle. 
but we're not really gonna be using those because for starters, if you're brand new at this and you're learning, you should learn the traditional way. And uh, to be perfectly honest with you, nothing beats the, uh, the flavor that you get from an offset or stick burner uh, type of smoker. So what I have here is I have a big hodgepodge, uh, to be honest with you. Um, uh, this is going to be a, a long, uh, slow fire today. Um, I've got a big bed of B&B uh, &B briquettes um, at the bottom, and then I layered on a little bit of royal oak uh, lump charcoal up top, and then I threw some pecan wood um, wood chunks on top. Now, uh, typically uh, Texas style, anyway, you're looking at uh, post oak for uh, for brisket, but uh, in um, in the event that you don't have post oak, pecan is just fine. Um, you might be wondering why I'm using a mix of charcoal. Uh, there's a couple different reasons. One, um, briquettes, believe it or not, um, they burn longer and they burn um, evenly. Lump charcoal has a tendency to burn hotter and faster, and then depending on the size of the pieces that you have in there, some might burn faster than others, but they do impart a great flavor, which is why I'm using these. Okay, so I don't know if you can see it, but down here in the corner, in the very corner, I've got a tumbleweed fire starter. I actually have a couple tumbleweed fire starters that I have the old map gas torch here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blast these through the vent. And now that I have a fire started, I'm going to close the smoker and I'm going to let this go to work. And once our smoker hits 250 degrees, I'm going to dial back on these vents a little bit. We're gonna get this brisket on. Okay, so once your grill gets up to 250 degrees, you want to dial your vents back a little bit. And what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to set this brisket directly in the very center. Now, notice how I have the point of the brisket facing towards the firebox. You want This is the thinnest end of the brisket, okay? This is the thickest end, all right? So I want the thickest end pointing towards the heat okay just helps for a more even cook now if you're using something like a traeger or a pit boss or any kind of pellet grill it doesn't really matter what end you point it at because usually on those at least on the bigger models the firebox is in the very center of the grill in fact on my traeger i noticed that the rear right corner tends to be the hottest but with an offset smoker like this if you're using a 200 dollars smoker like this and if you're brand new at this you should definitely go with a charcoal offset like this or a Weber Smoky Mountain or some kind of uh, ugly drum or a can smoker. If you're learning how to do this the traditional way, what you want to do is you want to face your point towards the heat. Now, if you're using an ugly drum or a can or something like that, then you don't really have much of a choice. You're going to be setting this directly over the heat. But in this particular case, using the char griller smoking champ we have got this point facing the fire okay so it's been an hour we got our thermal works dot plugged in here we got the temperature set right at 165. i just put the probe in the deepest part or the thickest part of the flat so it's saying 67 degrees and i could see that dropping down a little bit shortly here but regardless, at 165, that's a magic number, or by color. If you look at this and it's say like 159, and it has a deep, dark red, almost like a mahogany or redwood color, that's when you know it's time to wrap this brisket in foil. We're gonna get this closed and we're gonna let it roll. Okay, so this color right here, you guys, is exactly what I'm looking for when it comes time to grab a brisket. We're not quite at the 165, we're right in the middle of the 150s, okay? But this like dark red color that you're seeing right here, and you're starting to really feel a good crust build up on this brisket, that's exactly what I'm looking for when it comes time to wrap.
Okay, so what I'm about to do here is gonna seem like utter heresy for most traditional barbecues, and they're right. <laughs> Normally I would never, ever, ever do this. Okay, but you only have one smoker, you don't have three, and you wanna get ribs on, you wanna get chicken on, you wanna put some other cut of meat or cuts of meat on this smoker. You wanna be able to get all this done before your friends arrive. So what I'm about to do is I'm gonna show you how to finish a brisket in your oven after you have it on the smoke. So this has been here for about four and a half, closing in on five hours. So when you wrap a brisket, you gotta keep in mind, it's not gonna take on any more smoke, okay? You're wrapping it and that wrap is a barrier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this right in this pan, just like that, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're going to cover this with foil. You wanna get it reasonably tight. The reason I'm using this pan is because it's easier to move back and forth from the grill. Plus, I don't really have any huge, huge tin foil right now. Um, if I did, I would just wrap it up like a meat present, set it in the oven with the pan underneath it. But because I don't have any massive tin foil that would really encompass this whole thing in one shot, I'm doing it in a pan with two pieces of foil over it. So you wanna leave your probe exactly where you left it. You wanna take it out, just leave it right where it is. What we're gonna do with this brisket is we're gonna put it into a 250 degree oven. We're gonna put it dead center, right in the very middle. As far as height wise, you want it right in the very middle. Um, you might wanna, depending on the size of your brisket, how tall it is, you might wanna lower your rack um, down maybe one, but not too much more than that. Um, it's only 250 degrees, not very hot. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our ThermalWorks dot probe to go off at 198 degrees. Okay, so here we are, 198 degrees. I'm gonna shut that off. Turn off this alarm. And now that we have reached our temperature, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut the oven off I'm gonna leave the door open for a couple minutes just to let some of this heat come out. And once the oven's cooled down quite a bit, about maybe 10 minutes or so, let all this heat come out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close it back up and we're gonna let our brisket rest in there for two hours. Now there are other ways to do this. You can also wrap this in a towel, put it in a dry cooler, let it rest for two hours. Um, that's just fine. Or if you want to, you can use uh, one of them styrofoam coolers that you get at the package store or, uh, you know, at the supermarket or something like that. If you don't want to get brisket juice all over the inside of your coolers, I've used those before. I've used those on the go. If I'm going to someone else's house to do this, those work just fine. But it's really important. You want to let this rest. This smells amazing. I can't wait to get into it, but you need to let it rest. It's absolutely critical to let it rest for about two hours. Okay, you guys, here we are two hours later and we are ready to get into this. Before I do, let's do a really quick run through. I'm gonna to try to make this as fast as possible. You get this little little brisket. This is a whole packer. You wanna do a flat, you can do that too. This is the whole thing. I prefer the whole thing. About 50-50 ratio. Let it hang out, start to come up to room temperature a little bit. We fired up our offset smoker with some charcoal. We use some lump and we use some briquettes. Lump was a broil oak. Briquette was B&B, &B, some fire starters, got that going, just lit one end of it right near the vents, let it slowly burn across. We tossed some pecan wood on there, and then we let it roll until it got this really nice dark red color on it. And if you probe it, and you probe it right in the thickest part of the flat, and your ballpark internal temperature for wrapping is right around 165. Now that's a ballpark figure. You don't have to be at 165 every time you go to wrap. If the color's there, I wrap, that's what I do. So we wrapped it in some foil, put it in this pan, and then what we did was we did what any barbecue purist, including myself, would call a cheat. And we totally cheated by putting it into the oven at 250 to finish. But there's a couple benefits to that. And while it's cheating, you do save charcoal, okay? You save some time because you're not babysitting your smoker, you're not adding more fuel to it, like charcoal or wood, okay? And then it 
also clears out space on your smoker. If you only have one cooker, then you wanna do a brisket and then you wanna do a chicken and then you wanna do some ribs or something like that, or you wanna do brisket and ribs. Figure the brisket's gonna take something this size is about eight hours, 10 hours if you include the rest, okay? But the rest is off the smoker, but eight hours on the smoker, that's a work day. So if you wanna do a brisket and then you wanna do ribs that are gonna take four to six hours, depending on how you cook them, a good cheat is to toss it in the oven because smoke does not cook meat, heat does. Don't let anybody ever tell you that smoke cooks meat. Smoke gives it flavor, heat is what cooks your meat. Heat the meat. So we set the oven at 250, got it in there wrapped, left the probe exactly where it was, we wrapped around that probe, and then we set the probe for 198 degrees, let it sit in the oven until that alarm went off, once the alarm goes off, all we did was we opened, I shut the oven off and then I opened it for about 10, 15 minutes. You wanna let the majority of that heat out and then I closed the oven again and I let it rest inside the oven. You can do it in a cooler wrapped in a towel. Um, I've done that numerous times. You just gotta be aware, you don't wanna use a towel, that's all that great. You don't wanna use your, your mother's you know, good bath towels or your wife's good bath towels. Use an old you know, raggedy beach towel they don't care about because nine out of 10 times you're gonna get brisket juice on it. Okay, so after a two hour rest, we took it out and now we're gonna get into this. I'm gonna get the camera over here and I'm gonna show you exactly how I go about carving this brisket up. So when I carve up a brisket, the first thing I do is I find the very, edge of the flat which is right around in here you can find it with this big fat vein right here that you can see okay what we're gonna do is we're gonna start up there and we're gonna follow that fat vein all the way down and what we're doing here is we're separating the flat from the point okay now the point i'm gonna leave right in the juice for now the flat i'm gonna move over here I'm gonna get right on this board. Now what you wanna do is you wanna find the direction that your grains are running in. What I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna start slicing across the grain, okay? Now, keep in mind you guys, your flat is a very good chance especially with a little select brisket like this, is not going to be nearly as tender as the point. I do about quarter inch slices. brisket you got a beautiful beautiful smoke ring absolutely perfect you can't go wrong and I'm gonna bring out the point now this is my favorite part of the brisket this is where things get really good what I'm gonna do with the rest of these slices here on the flat end is I'm going to do the best I can to keep them together get them right back in that juice save this juice do not get rid of that don't pour that out that's heresy so with the point end you got a lot more fat up here. And this is my favorite part of the brisket. There's more marbling up here. It's just overall, they just the most flavorful end. Some people prefer the lean. I love the point. And what I do with the point is I cube it right up. And what you can do with the point is you can eat it straight up or you can dredge it back through the juice and toss them on a hot grill and just kind of crisp up the outside of them a little bit and make brisket burnt ends. Best part brisket is the point. I'll show you why in just a minute. Okay you guys so I got this beautiful beautiful pan full of sliced brisket and now I got nothing else to say I'm gonna get down a little bit of brisket point right here. Mm. Marvelous absolutely marvelous. Mm. I love brisket point. The fat just renders it's like butter the flavor is so good, so good. But, of course, I gotta get in here and go for one of these slices that just pulls right apart. See, it comes right apart. You totally want this when you have brisket. Oh, it's so on point. And I gotta tell you, 
Salt and black pepper is really all you need. Usually when I do briskets, I like to spice things up a little bit. And, uh, you know, just put a little, your own personal flair to it. Just use a savory rub. Don't really use anything that's sugar heavy, like a sweet rub. It doesn't come out all that great. Especially with beef. Beef, you want savory. You want to taste beef. And salt and pepper is about as savory as you can get, but, oh man. Oh man. This is something you can just eat all the time. And then for whatever reason, yours comes out a little tough or dry or overcooked. Don't lose heart in that. There's a million different things you can do with brisket that might not be completely tender or just a little overcooked or something like that. You can chop it up and you can put it in chili. You can make nachos with it. You can make tacos with it. You can do all kinds of, you can put it on, uh, you can put it on pizza, you know, just top it up real fine. The flavor is still gonna be there, okay? Even if it's not this amazing tender brisket. I mean, I gotta tell you, I did everything exactly the way I should, but this was a select grade brisket. Those aren't the greatest, but it's the only thing I could find at the time, especially after uh, JDS uh, beef distribution uh, was packed um, about a month ago. Um, finding brisket's been really, really tough. Um, but down the line here, I've got a 22 pound USDA prime brisket, prime grade. And I'm gonna be doing that in October and I'll keep you all updated on that. Make sure that uh, you guys get some pictures, some video. Uh, yeah, that will probably make that the monster brisket video. So stay tuned for that. So this is good. I wouldn't call this fantastic like you'd get from, you know, prime or even a choice grade. Typically when I do brisket, I usually get choice grade. That's what I can find. So that's what usually what I use. Um, in this particular case, this was a Walmart brisket. And once again, if you're cooking in the backyard for your friends, they'll love this. Um, me, because I've done so many of them and um, I do them fairly often. I'm a little bit more critical when it comes to a select grade. There's not as much marbling in there. Um, it's really, you know, kind of the very bottom, not the bottom of the barrel of beef grades, but certainly on the lower end of what I would consider acceptable. So once again, this flavor is great. I would prefer to have a little bit more fat in there, a little bit more marbling. Um, I think the flavor and the juiciness could be a little bit better, but for what this is, you can't go wrong. You really can't. I absolutely love brisket. And guys, if you like what you see here, <laughs> and you like what we're doing on this channel, give us a subscribe, check us out on social media, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, leave your comments in the comments section, feel free to shoot us a message anytime, we'll try to get back to you as fast as we can. Thanks for hanging out with us today, we'll see you next time.